Hello children, this is your teacher McKendro and I hope that you all are fine. Well, today I am going to teach you the lesson named Desert Animals and it is for class 6th. So what you have to do is, you need to take out your book name Honeysuckle. So here I start. Lesson that I'm dealing today is desert animals. Okay. Before I begin, let me just give you the introduction of this lesson. This lesson, as the name suggests, throws light upon the life of the desert animals and their very unique ways to adapt to the harsh atmosphere. Now, summary of this lesson: Desert is a place with no water, means the driest place on earth. And the lesson desert animals is all about the animals who live in the desert it throws light on the ways the animals in the desert adapt themselves to the weather of the desert and the different methods they use to adjust with its harsh life like charbils spend the hottest part of the day in their burrows below ground duckling beetle drag drops of moisture on their legs, lift them into the air and drop down into their mouth. In the dry, rocky deserts of America lives a snake called rattlesnake. It is called rattlesnake because it makes a sound with its tail. Another animal which lives in the desert is a mongoose. Mongooses love to search for food in groups. They are known for their ability to kill snakes without hurting themselves. The camel is known for its unique abilities to live in the desert. They have long shaggy coats to keep warm in winter, which falls away and gets shorter in the summer to keep cool. There are two different kinds of camel in the desert. The dormitory, it has only single hump and Bactrian camel. It has two humps. People usually think that camel's hump is a storage container and it stores water in it. But actually, humps are full of fat. This fat feeds the camels when they have nothing to eat. They can use this fat to fill their stomach for days together when there's nothing to eat. Okay kids, now I want you all to sit tight and have your book placed right in front of you. And what is the name of the book again? Honey Suckle. Okay, this is the book that I'm referring to. And whenever I am teaching you online here, I used to talk about this book because I don't want you to miss anything that I will be providing. Okay, so what you have to do right now is I will be reading the paragraph and I want you to follow me. I will provide you also the meaning of those difficult words and their meanings. Okay kids, so here I go. Deserts are the driest places on earth and sometimes go for months or even years without rain. But even the desert animals cannot survive without water or for long periods in the scorching sun. So they have had to find different ways of coping with the harsh conditions. For example, charbils spend the hottest part of the day in cool underground burrows, and strange insects called duckling beetles are expert at catching drops of moisture on their legs, then lifting them into the air until the drops trickle down into their mouths. Not all deserts are endless seas of rolling sand dunes. Some are rocky or beverly and dotted with small bushes while others are sprinkled with colorful flowers during the spring. Okay kids, now you must have followed me and uh, while I read the paragraph you did take notice of everything. Okay, I think uh, it's time for me to tell you the meaning of some of the words which are given in the first paragraph. Okay, so the first word which I'm going to tell you is scorching sun. 
The spelling is S C O R C H I N G. Scorching sun, S U N sun. That means very hot. Okay, very hot. The meaning of scorching sun is very hot. The next word that you probably found in the first paragraph was gerbils. G E R B I L S. Gerbils. Okay, this is the pronunciation of this word. And what is that? A mouse like desert, rottens with long hind legs. Okay, let me just make it more simple. By looking at the picture right now, you will get to know that animals or which creatures I'm talking about. It's a small type of a mouse which usually, you know, hide itself underground. The next word is dunes, D-U-N-E-S. It means heaps of sand formed by the wind. Now you will get to know actually the meaning of that word if I show you the picture here, okay? Dunes, like you can see the heaps of sand formed by the wind, okay? So those are called dunes, okay? Bebelade, P-E-B-B-L-Y, bebelade means stony okay that is the meaning of that and you could see that here right now okay so that you will understand that what it is by the way okay so kids i don't want you to miss anything here while i provide you all those let me provide you the explanation of the first paragraph okay deserts are the places which have less water and almost no rain for months together and sometimes in a year also Therefore, there are the driest places on earth. But animals who live here, it is difficult for them as well to live without water for a long span of time, especially during hot days of summer. So they find their own alternate way to beat such difficult conditions of the atmosphere. For example, gerbils go underground during hot days in their cool burrows, duckling beetle, an insect which uses a strange way to beat the heat. Okay kids, now I'm showing you what is that actually here. It's burrows. And what is burrows, you know? I mean, it's an underground which these animals hide themselves, okay? It's their house, you could say, okay? B-U-R-R-O-W-S, that is actually the spelling of that word, and it's burrows, and it means underground, or uh, something which is dug by these animals for themselves to hide. Darkling beetle is an insect which uses a strange way to beat the heat. Now you are going to see that it's on the screen here. It's darkling beetle, okay? Why darkling beetle is the name? Because darkling means it could, you know, roam around in the dark. They drag drops of moisture from their legs, lift them in the air and drop them into their mouth. All the deserts are not the same hills of sand. Each has its own characteristics. Some are stony and have a rugged surface with small, uh, you know, bush plants. Few also have colorful flowers during the spring season. Okay, kids, now I am moving on to the second paragraph of this lesson. There are more than 2,300 different kinds of snakes around the world, ranging from just 15 centimeters long to more than 11 meters. Most snakes are quite harmless, but there are a few that are so poisonous they can kill a human being with just one bite. Most snakes lay eggs, but there are many which give birth to their young. In the dry, rocky deserts of America lives a rather evil looking snake with a very bad reputation. Its frightening rattle can be heard as far as 30 meters away and it can strike with lightning speed. Okay kids, now I'm providing you the meaning of those words which are there in the second paragraph. I hope that you all are writing them down, okay, because these are important. I want you all to write the meaning of those words which I'm providing. Okay kids, don't miss the chance. Okay, now the meaning of frightening. Spelling is F-R-I-G-H-T-E-N-I-N-G. 
it means scared uh, whenever you are fear of something or whenever you're afraid of something that's called frightening okay that is the meaning of that rattle r a t t l e it means sharp knocking sound okay sharp knocking sound and i will be showing you that uh, venomous snake that is called a rattlesnake which makes that sound okay so now i'm going to provide you the explanation of this paragraph the second paragraph of course snakes are also of many types there are about 2300 types of snakes they range from the smallest size that is just 15 centimeters long to more than 11 meters. Most of the snakes are harmless, but few are so poisonous that their one bite is enough to kill anyone. Most of them lay eggs to reproduce, but many are there who give birth to their young ones. American deserts are dry and rocky in nature. There lives an evil looking snake and a very bad reputation. One can hear its sharp sound even from a distance of 30 meters. It strikes very fast with lightning speed. Can you imagine kids? See I have introduced you the most venomous snake and that was the rattlesnake. Okay, now you could see that here. It's tremendously venomous. One bite, just one bite and it could kill anyone. And that person or animal or any creature would just die on spot. This is how venomous this creature is. Look at that. Can you see that? Yes, look at that, look at that, come on. Are you not afraid of this creature? Rattlesnake, the most venomous which lives in the desert okay kids all right okay now i'm moving on to the next paragraph that is the third paragraph but the rattlesnake or rattler as it is sometimes called prefers to avoid people if it possibly can it holds its tail upright and rattles the end whenever it is disturbed in the hope that the intruder will go away. However, if its warnings are ignored and it feels threatened, it will coil ready to bite. But the rattler itself cannot hear the noise its own tail makes like most snakes. It hears things through vibration in the ground. If a person walks nearby, the snake can feel the movement. But if the same person were to shout, it would not hear a thing. Rattlesnakes are very common and widespread animals living right across the American continent from Canada to Argentina. They feed on a variety of prey including mice, wolves, rats, uh, chipmunks and many other small animals. Rattlesnakes kill their prey with venom. Like all snakes, they swallow the unfortunate animal whole. Few snakes have to eat more than once a week and some such as the larger pythons can survive for a year or more without eating. Oh my god it's unbelievable. These are the desert animals that I'm talking about and I'm teaching you here. Now you must have seen probably on the screen while I've shown you. Okay kids now they are the meaning of uh, some difficult words. Wolves, V-O-L-E-S, wolves, which means small plant. Wolves is actually just the small plants, uh, which is found in the desert. You can take this in that way. Chipmunks, C-H-I-P-M-U-N-K-S. Uh, it's a small ground squirrels, having light and dark stripes, okay? And uh, I would say that you must have seen this animal. Again, it's a small animal like a uh, squirrel, okay? Uh, see, I'm going to show you that. It's on the screen here right now. You will get to know actually that uh, which and what animal is that. Okay, chipmunk. We call it chipmunks. The next word which is given over there is quail. Quail means to turn or uh, to make a loop, yes? 
turn or to make a loop is called coil. Vibration, V-I-B-R-A-T-I-O-N. It means movement or shaking, something shaking, okay? Whenever something is shaking, like uh, uh, sometimes you must have seen your mobile phone when it's put into vibration mode because you don't want the others to be disturbed. So uh, you usually put that in the vibration mode and that is actually the meaning of that is movement, okay? Venom, V-E-N-O-M, what is the meaning of that? Poisonous toxin, the venom inside those venomous creatures like the rattlesnake I was telling you, okay? The poison of that particular creature for example, the rattlesnake, the poison of that is called the venom. Okay, now I'm going to provide you the explanation of that paragraph. There is also the rattler or rattlesnake. Yes, we are talking about uh, that venomous, you know, snake, which is either called rattlesnake or rattler, okay? Its choice is to avoid people as much as it can. If it feels disturbed, it holds its tail upright and gives a sharp sound to make the intruder move away like this. Listen to the sound of the tail of that venomous creature here. Can you hear that? Again. That is the sound of the tail of the real snake. Okay. Intruder means I-N-T-R-U-D-E-R, -E uh, the one who has come to your area to disturb you. So such people or such creature you would say is called an intruder. Okay. So what it does, what this rattlesnake do, you know? It holds its tail upright and gives a sharp sound like this. Now you can hear that. And just because of that, that intruder move away because it's know that right now there is a venomous creature who is going to attack if it's disturbed. But if its warnings are not paid attention and it feels threatened, it will turn around to bite. The strange thing is that it cannot hear the sound of its tail, you know. Like other snakes, it also hears through the waves produced on the ground, means it can feel the vibration but cannot hear the sound. Snake can feel the movement of a walking person but cannot hear his voice how loud may he shout. Rattlesnakes are commonly found in the American continent from Canada to Argentina. Their prey choice includes small dog down or eat animals completely. Their eating habits also vary. Some snakes eat more than once a week. Animals like mice, small plant eating, rotten wolves, rats, etc. They use poisonous toxin in their body to kill its prey. The way other snakes and some like large pythons can do without eating for a year or more. Now I'm reading the fourth paragraph of this lesson. Mongooses like to hunt together but they always keep a lookout for dangerous predators nearby. Poking their noses into holes, overturning rocks with their paws and scratching the ground with their sharp claws. Banded mongooses are very amusing animals to watch. A common sight in many parts of Africa, they travel in groups of about 20 to forage for beetles, millipedes and other small creatures. I will provide you the meaning of those words which are there given in the paragraph. Predator. Spelling is P-R-E-D-A-T-O-R and it means an animal naturally preying on others like uh, the lions, the tigers, the leopards, etc. Those creatures are called predators. Okay, why? Because they prey on others, means they attack other animals to eat them and to survive. Amusing. A-M-U-S-I-N-G, which means interesting and enjoyable. Forage, F-O-R-A-G-E, which means search for food. Now, I will provide you the explanation 
of that paragraph. Mongooses go hunting in groups. They always keep a place from where they can watch predators near them. It is interesting to watch them banded, poking their nose into holes, overturning rocks with their paws and scratching the ground with their sharp claw. It is very common to view them traveling in groups of about 20. They travel in search of food. Their food is beetles, millipedes and other small creatures. Now the next paragraph. They like to hunt together, keeping in touch whenever they go out of sight behind rocks or bushes by twittering and calling. Always on the lookout for danger, hawks, eagles and large snakes. They warn one another with a special alarm call if they spot anything suspicious. Now the meaning of those difficult words. Twittering, the spelling is T-W-I-T-T-E-R-I-N-G, which means uh, a sound, okay? Uh, it's usually the sound of a sparrow. A sparrow is a bird which twitter, okay? Yeah. And the next word is suspicious, which means doubtful. Whenever you are having a doubt, when you suspect something, that's called suspicious. Now, let me provide you the explanation of that paragraph. They move in groups to search for their food but if they need to move to places which are not visible like at the back of bushes or rocks they make sounds like twittering to stay in touch they take extra care to keep a place from where they can watch the animals who are dangerous for them like hawks eagles and large snakes on noticing anything doubtful they make a special warning call to alert one another now the next paragraph kids mongooses are famous for being able to kill snakes without getting hurt themselves their reactions are so fast that they can dodge each the snake strikes they continually make a nuisance of themselves until after a while when the snake gets tired they quickly dive in for the kill now the meaning of some of the word that are there in the paragraph i think it's dodge yes d-o-d-g-e dodge which means move quickly to avoid its enemy like you must have seen those animals whenever a dangerous animal comes to attack the smaller one what they do they dodge okay they just like move themselves away from them just to protect themselves not to get hurt or not to get attacked by dangerous creatures nuisance and the meaning of that is annoying now let me provide you the explanation of that paragraph mongooses are known for their ability to kill snakes you know that they don't even get hurt while doing so their reactions are very fast and can move quickly after attacking the snake they continually keep annoying the snakes with their attacks until it gets tired and gets killed now the next paragraph all the female mongooses have their kitten at about the same time. They are raised by the whole group in a den made inside an old termite mound or hollow log. When most of the adults are out looking for food, one or two males stay behind to stand guard until the others return for the night. Now the meaning of some of the difficult words. Mound, M-O-U-N-D, mound, it means heap, H-E-A-P, heap, hollow log, a piece of wood having a hole in it. That's called hollow log. The meaning of that is a piece of wood having a hole in it. Okay, now the explanation. The peculiar thing in mongooses is that all the females give birth to their babies at the same time. The babies are raised by the whole group, means looking after the baby is not the responsibility of one, rather the whole. They raise them in a den, means the house they have made inside an old termite mound or in a hollow log. When they go out in search of food, two of the male members stay back to look after the babies and wait till the others come back. Okay, the next paragraph. Another animal which lives in the desert is the camel. Camels were first domesticated by people many thousands of years ago. 
in the wild, camels usually live in small groups of up to 30 animals. Camels have long shaggy winter coats to keep warm and shorter, tightier coats in the summer to keep cool. A thirsty camel can drink as much as 30 gallons of water. That's about 500 full glasses in just 10 minutes. Normally, however, it gets all the moisture it needs from desert plants and can survive for up to 10 months without drinking any water at all. Meaning of some of the difficult words, domesticated spelling is D-O-M-E-S-T-I-C-A-T-E-D to tame, to keep at home or any other place, okay? Like the domestic animals, yes. So camels are one of the domesticated animals. Shaggy, spelling S-H-A-G-G-Y, which means covered with long, untidy hair, okay? Now I'm going to show you some picture of the camels there, okay? The camel is another desert animal. It was first tamed by people, was kept as a domestic animal. At homes thousands of years ago, camels have unique capacity to adjust with their atmosphere. Like in the forest, they live in small groups of 30. They have long, untidy hair to use as coat to keep their body warm in winters. And uh, this long coat falls away and gets shortened as summer approaches to keep cool. Camels can drink almost 30 gallons, about uh, 500 glasses of water whenever they are thirsty. In just 10 minutes, its body can get moisture from the desert plants and can live without drinking water for up to 10 months. Okay, kids, isn't that surprising? Yes, it is unbelievable. Uh, moving to the next uh, paragraph, there are two different kinds of camels. One known as the dormitory has only a single hump. Just try to point that particular word which is given there. Dormitory, okay. There are two different kinds of camels. One known as the dormitory has only a single hump. The other is called a bacterian and has two humps. The humps help the animal to survive in the desert by acting as storage containers, but they don't store water. As many people wrongly believe they are full of fat. This fat nourishes the camels when food is scarce. If they have nothing to eat for several days, their humps shrink as the fat is used up. There are many other ways in which camels are adapted to desert life. Their mouths are so tough that even the sharp thorn cannot pierce through. Okay, kids, now the meaning of those difficult words. Scars. S-C-A-R-C -C is scars. And the meaning of that is less in quantity or meager. Okay, so that's called scars. Okay, like uh, scarcity of water, you would say, whenever you don't have uh, sufficient amount of water to drink. So scarcity of water less in quantity. Pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E, -E, which means to make whole, okay, into something. Okay, now the explanation of that particular paragraph. Camels are of two kinds, dormitory, which has a single hump, and bacterian, which has two humps. The hump is there to help the animal to survive without water in the desert. It acts as a storage container but it does not store water as people think and believe these hums are full of fat this fat feeds the camel when food is less in quantity when fat is used the size of the hum becomes smaller as it is used up instead of food camels use many other ways as well to live and adjust in the desert. Their mouths are tough and hard. They can even eat thorns and they do not hurt them. Okay, kids, that was the last paragraph of the lesson. I hope that you have enjoyed. I hope that you have understood and I hope that you have learned also, okay? So, uh, the next home screen is actually the question and answer sections which is provided for you. Uh, you may write and uh, if not you may you know see this video again 
okay in order to record these answers which are provided for you okay don't miss them i'm calling it a day hashtag stay safe stay home bye bye